Maruchan superfans are everywhere. From the busy moms who want to deliver maximum flavor in a flash to dorm room diners who want to put some slurp in their step. There are a ton of copycats you could use, but if you want to bless your bowl, there's only one true Maruchan. Whether you choose instant lunch, ramen bowls, yakisoba, or restaurant quality gold, Maruchan is the only ramen worth obsessing over. Smiles for all, Maruchan. See what all the ramen hype is about at maruchan.com. Vaginas are absolute magic. And Ali is here to give them the respect they deserve. That means shame-free supplements made with clinically studied ingredients to keep your pH in check and your pleasure a priority. Put yourself on top. Go to Ollie.com today. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Hey, you guys, you are listening to Oh Crap Potty Training with Jamie Glowacki. I am your host, Jamie Glowacki, and I am the author of Oh Crap Potty Training and Oh Crap, I Have a Toddler. So today I want to start off by reading a testimonial somebody sent me, a review via email. And I like it not only because it's a good review, (laughs) but because there's a couple of really important points in this mama's email. So let me go ahead and read it. Hi, Jamie. I followed your method last February with my daughter when she was exactly two years old. So she's been trained for over a year now, and I'm still thinking about what a great experience it was for us as I watched my friends struggle with starting, even as our kids are now three. I really appreciated your tone and bluntness. I needed your kick in the pants, or I would be just like them due to my own doubt. When they ask what I did, I tell them your method, but I say, you really need to read the book. It's not just steps. She gives you confidence, a reality check, and kicks your ass for sitting on it instead of leading your children and being a teacher. That's what I'm still thinking about a year later. This tone affected other realms of parenting for me. I viewed my role as a teacher more broadly. I teach her now as we unload the dishwasher, how to put on her jacket, how to do the laundry, instead of just doing these tasks for her, believing her to be too young to get it. Now she's three and can do more than her peers can, and I'm told all the time that she speaks clearly with more words and does very well with grown-ups. It's because I'm constantly talking to her and educating. I use correct words and I correct her. You taught me great phrases. I would have never thought to say, accidents are not okay. We pee or poo in the potty. We will get it next time. It's brilliant. If I tell her accidents are okay, then that's all her little mind knows. It's so obvious that's not what I should say, but it's so natural to say, it's okay, accidents happen. It's the right thing to do. Thanks for your book and the kick in the ass to step into a new version of parent that my daughter needed me to be. Oh, I just love this. I I love it not just because it's a good review, which is nice, but there's so much to this and this is my intention. So recently, it's really funny because in this work, I see so many parenting trends and shifts and more recently than ever, I see, you know, people will mention me in their stories on Instagram or somebody will share something with me about somebody talking about me. And I've had people say a militant, like it's really bizarre because I don't think I'm militant at all. I remember somebody shared a story and said, you know, I'm not into this rip the band aid off approach, which Guys, I don't know how you potty train in a diaper. You're extending potty training by at least a year if you potty train in a diaper. You can't like actively potty train. You have to take off the diaper to potty train. <laughs> like that's just how it goes. And there will always come a moment where you're like, okay, I got to take off the diaper now, whether it's now or in a year. And if you want to send a mixed message of like, yes, you can pee in a diaper sometimes, but other times I need you to use the potty. I think that's just confusing. But whatever. I think what's happening is there's this gentle parenting is all the rage. And I really agree with gentle parenting, except that people have bastardized it to lean into permissive parenting or that every single thing should be the impetus from the child. And I fight this so much because there are so many people, oh my goodness, I saw an Instagram influencer mom, right? These influencers say, oh, by the way, it doesn't really matter what age your kid is when they potty train, they'll be fine. And I was like, all right, I get what you're saying, except it does matter because your child's going to have to go to school at some point. And if you have the luxury of staying home and your child's not in any sort of preschool and their first school experience is kindergarten, I still see kids get kicked out of kindergarten for not being potty trained properly. So it does matter when you do it. And there are markers for when it's like, 
too late. I see parents regularly get forced up against a deadline. So they're like, I'm not going to push my child. I don't care when they potty train, but then they signed up for a preschool and come August 22nd, they are crawling up my butt because they're like, I need this kid potty trained. And then they're super pressured. They're super forceful about it. And it's weird because they went through this. I don't need to rush this to, I'm going to shove this down my kid's throat. And that's why I feel so bad for the kids. So, you know, I really honestly don't care when you potty train, except know that there are certain situations in which your child is going to have to be potty trained. And at that point, are you going to have to be forceful about it? It's really hard to potty train a four-year-old. That's a four-year habit in diapers. And so if your child isn't quote unquote ready by the time they're three, three and a half, then you've got to take that bull by the horns. And I do feel strongly about that. So I get kickback about that in my book because I am blunt about it. But I'm fighting a cultural norm right now that is like waiting far too long. And then it gets way, way, way harder. One thing this mama mentioned that I don't know that I've mentioned on this podcast, but it is in my book, is saying it's okay when your child has an accident. And like this mama said, it's so natural, right? Because you don't want your child to feel bad, but it isn't okay. And one thing we have to parse out is the word accidents. And I have talked about this, but it bears repeating. So in the first couple of weeks of potty training, they're not really accidents. It's a learning curve. Your child may pee on the floor. They may pee in their pants, but it's a learning curve and it's not really an accident. An accident is like, once you've considered yourself potty trained, once you've considered your child potty trained, I would hope you yourself are potty trained. But once your child is potty trained, then when they have accidents, those are accidents. And you don't want to say it's okay because it's not okay. Even in those early days when your child does have, you know, for lack of a better term, I think we say accidents, when they do pee outside of the potty, you don't want to tell them it's okay because it's not. But we don't want to shame them. We don't want to say like, it's bad. So all we say is, no, it's not okay to pee on the floor. Pee and poop go in the potty. We'll get it next time. So just be cautious of that because that language, kids are very literal. And if you say, oh, it's okay, they're like, okay, great. I can just pee wherever I want. And that can and does happen. Another thing this mama brought up, well, first of all, I just love the whole teaching, right? Like our role is as a teacher. And in the early days of potty training, yeah, so much of the process is on you. It's not a 50-50 split. You're the teacher and you're in charge of noticing the cues noticing the signals, noticing what's happening, and then you reflect that back to your child so they can learn how to do that. I just recently had a little boy, he was struggling with poop and he would kind of flap his hands when he was starting to escalate, when the feeling to poop became strong. And so the mama kept reflecting back, look, you're flapping your hands. That means it's time to go poop. Well, son of a gun, within two weeks, the kid was saying, oh, I'm flapping my hands. He wasn't entirely sure about the sensation to go poop but he knew he was flapping his hands and he knew that was his cue to go poop. So he sat and he pooped. So they're very, very smart. Our kids are really smart. So when we reflect these things, then we become the teacher. And so I think that's just a really important thing to remember because again, in this sort of gentle parenting climate, we tend to take the child's lead on big developmental milestones when there are clear age markers in which this needs to be done and that we are the teacher and it's okay to take the lead. Like she said, you know, we don't sit around and wait for our kids to do chores. This is the Montessori way, but this is also so prominent right now is kids don't help around the house. They don't do any sort of chores and parents think there's this magical age. Like when they get into second grade, they'll be able to do their laundry but it's you doing laundry with them all the time. And I know it's a pain. I know it's more time consuming. And I know that it's not going to be all the time. But being your child's teacher is key, especially in these early years. And I talk about this a lot on my parenting podcast. But if you don't know my parenting work, it's really based on Kim John Payne. His philosophy is that zero to six is govern. Six to 12 is garden. And 12 to 18 is guide. And so govern, garden, guide. And I've lived this intuitively with Pascal, but I also saw in my own community that parents were being far too permissive in the zero to six age. And then there were no boundaries set. 
There were no clear leaders and followers, which you should be the leader and your child should be the follower. And what ended up happening is in those six to 12 years, parents were having to discipline, set the boundaries, set the governing. And that's miserable. Your child is so much personality is coming out. That should be a really fun age. There shouldn't be too much permissiveness in these early years. I was just talking to a client. She said, hey, Jamie, I have a great new parenting philosophy. And I was like, oh, really? What is it? She said, hard parenting. It's hard. It's hard to be a parent. I laughed and laughed because parenting is hard. And I don't know what's happening recently. I don't know if it's social media. I don't know if we're all just a little too connected and too in each other's business. But there's this idea that parenting should be a cakewalk. Y'all, we're raising humans. We're raising the next generation of humans. That's hard work. It is hard parenting. And I think, especially when it comes to potty training, we have been misled to think it should be super easy or they're not ready. And that is false. It's not an easy milestone. It has never been an easy milestone. In prior generations, there were less distractions. Yeah, there were less things going on. Kids definitely didn't have a schedule the way they do now. So there are a bunch of factors that make it harder. But this has never been a pleasant milestone. So the idea that it should just be easy or you're fucking it up or it should just be easy or your kid's not ready is just a lie. It's hard. Even the rock stars, it's still hard. So bear that in mind. Your parenting philosophy should be hard parenting. It's hard. And I think just whatever's happening in the world, we think that it should be easy, that we should get to keep our lives the same. I have so many parents who complain about, I'm not getting up to help night train. I need my sleep. Like, sorry, you have a kid now. You have to do some things that are hard. So wanted to throw that that ball in your court. Next up, on um, kind of a similar line, and this mama had brought up in her uh, review, she said, I needed your kick in the pants or I would be just like them due to my own doubt. And I love that because there is a lot of doubt. There is a lot of doubt. It's really hard to be a parent these days. It's really hard to be a mom these days. There's just so much coming at you. In addition to maybe working outside the home, which you may be doing, There's so many schedules, you know, the kids schedule, your schedule, there's activities like, again, that just weren't around in previous generations. I think there's a culture, there's a keep up culture and there's a research culture. And I think I had a client come to me once. She had a four and a half year old. She said, literally, I was researching potty training so much. I forgot to potty train. And I thought that was really poignant. And that does happen. We have to research stuff now like we never had to. Gosh, when I was little, there weren't even car seats. So you didn't have to research a car seat. You got the latest crib at Sears and Robot. You didn't have to research food. Food was pretty normal. You didn't have all these different philosophies coming at you. So I find that moms just get exhausted, mired in research culture, and it plants doubt. I have social media. I scroll Instagram like the next guy. And I swear, like I know, for example, I know how to eat in the way that just is best for me, best for my body. I actually did a whole couple of episodes on it on my parenting episode, if you want to check that out. And even I can get confused with like the food stuff screaming at you from Instagram. Like everybody's an expert now. The way Reels and Instagram works is like, it's like people throwing information at you. And so it gets very confusing. I have had clients, I can almost see them freeze in a hard moment, whether it's potty training or parenting issue or a tantrum. And it's like, you can see them going through the Rolodex of parenting experts and Instagram posts and gentle parenting advice and permissive parenting and authoritative parenting. And and they get stuck in all the research such that they get pulled out of parenting and you get this massive doubt. And that doubt can be paralyzing and it can really make you not move forward, you know? And I notice it even in my own work. Like a lot of times I'll have a work project due and I'll say, I'll do more research because I don't want to just jump in and do it. And sometimes just jumping in and doing it and making the mistakes, repairing the mistakes is the best thing you can do. But along with that doubt comes fear, right? And we cannot parent out of fear. And I see this so much in potty training. Listen, I don't know that you've experienced fear. I think the 
hardest thing in the world is when you go from like block one and two, you're in the house, your kids kind of get in it, you're all set. And now you got to leave the house and you leave the house on a wing and a prayer commando, no diaper. And I think that is like the scariest day ever. So like, you're fearful of that day. I get it, but you still have to do it. And again, so many clients will be like, I'm not ready. I don't want to leave the house. I don't, he's doing so great. I don't want to leave the house. What if he has an accident? What if he does? Then we have information. Yeah. So if we potty train out of fear or this, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, I can't predict the what ifs. Your kid's going to be totally different. They're probably going to be a rock star. They're probably going to do great. That is mostly what happens. But we start getting ourselves backed into a fear corner about things cropping up. I see this a lot with parents who have had poop struggles or maybe some pee withholding. And they'll be like, but what if it comes back? Hey, it might come back. In case it comes back, we have the tools. So we can't parent out of this fear because it paralyzes us and it will stop forward progress. And so again, I know just from online communications, so many parents say, I'm not potty training. I don't want pee on my floor. Oh my God, you're going to have pee on your floor regardless. You're going to puke on your floor. You're going to, <laughs> there's going to be stuff that happens, right? And so this fear of like, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. And so sometimes I have to ask people, what do you want? Because, okay, I used to wait tables, you know, back in the day, every once in a while, you'd get a customer and you'd be like, you know, they'd order a steak or a hamburger and say, how do you want that cooked? And they'd say, well, I don't want it. I don't want it well done. I don't want this. I don't want it rare. I don't want And Finally, I'd say, what do you want? Because I can get you what you want but stop with the don't wants. And I see that a lot in parenting, especially in potty training is, you know, well, I don't want, 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 I don't want. And I'm like, what do you want? Because a lot of times what you want also, I may not be able to give it to you because it's magical. Like if you want a kid to come out of the gates perfectly potty trained in a day, I can't give that to you. So, <laughs> so again, we go back to hard parenting as your philosophy, right? So just be mindful. I think we live in an anxiety ridden world. I was talking to one of my consultants and she said, gosh, the P withholding is really upticking. And guys, if you're experiencing P withholding, and by that, I mean, you know, 12 hours plus, you need a consult. We have a protocol that is 100% successful, but it absolutely 100% needs to be done with a consultant. So I definitely uh, suggest that. But anyway, you know, in March of 2020, P withholding really started March and April of the pandemic. Obviously it was anxiety, right? And so then it sort of chilled out in the last year, but now it's back. We were just kind of ruminating over the phone. And I said, I think it's just, it, we're, we live in an anxiety ridden world. It's like, we're on the verge of war, right? We've got stuff happening with Ukraine and Russia. We've got cartels. It's a mess. Like the world is a mess. And I think again, if you're on social media, it's anxiety ridden because there's so many people screaming at you. There's so many options. There's so many choices. There's so many research things that need to be done so that your child is healthy and happy. And you're always maybe trying to do your trauma work. And so we have this like really anxious world right now. And so I think we have to stay on top of that fear and on top of that doubt with potty training or just with, you know, with parenting in general, but you can't potty train out of fear. If you are leading with fear, your child will smell that. You smell like fear. And when you don't know what you're doing, and of course we don't know what we're doing. I mean, I know it's a wing and a prayer when you start potty trading. Hopefully you have my book and you have some, some level of confidence, right? But when you lead with fear, your child can smell that and they go berserk because if mom or dad is not in control, if mom and dad are afraid, if mom and dad are just filled with doubt and leading kind of hanging back, you know what I mean? Then your child's not going to react well because it doesn't feel safe. What feels safe is when the parent has got the situation. I got you. I know what I'm doing. Even if I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to do it with confidence, right? But if we constantly lead with fear and doubt, it will end badly because your child will be, their nervous system will react. They'll be like, oh, they'll be all janky because you're all janky. So just kind of notice in yourself, especially as you begin the potty training process, or if you're having a struggle with the potty training process, you are going to get through it 100%. Obviously, I suggest a consult and get help. But regardless, I know your kid's not going to go to college in diapers, right? <laughs> you are going to get past it, but then don't be fearful of it coming back or, oh my God, what am I going to do? We do this future tripping too, like, 
I've worked with people who are like, that's it, never mind. He's never going to be potty trained. That's it. He's going to be in diapers for the rest of his life. And I'm like, okay, maybe we can take a step back and take a breath. (laughs) So anyway, I'm going to close out for today. That's all I wanted to say is like, try to notice when you're in fear and try to get a jump on it. And, you know, if it's true anxiety, if you're really anxious, it's okay to get some meds or something. We have anxiety in record numbers right now. And an anxious parent is no good. So get some help if you really do have anxiety. I really encourage that a lot. I talk a lot about that on my other podcast. It's not okay to have accidents and you are the teacher. I'm going to leave you with that. All right. I hope you guys have an awesome day. As always, rock on. I appreciate you listening and I appreciate you. 